Hello, hello. Today we're going to be doing um, an altered prep. Um, Alice in Wonderland theme. I'm just going to go ahead and continue to do what I was doing, which is um, with washi tape and then running them through the machine. People some time to so they can see what I'm doing. To do that for right now, I've already cut my Mad Hatter. More that I have to cut, but working on it right now. Hi, Janet. I try to get some of this stuff done. <laughs> Emphasis on the word try. Move the mic up closer because that could probably be why you don't hear me too well. Get rid of some of these. Is that better? Hello, my beautiful people. So I've done two trees so far um, that I've covered in washi tape. And this is the Dollar Tree washi tape that I used. Um, two Harley Quinn. And, I mean, I did a Harley Quinn and then I did a stripe. And then... This is the second one. Not sure what the color scheme is going to be so far, but black washi tape also. Um, I try not to have to color them so much, so I'm going to try to cover them as much as I can with washi tape so that I don't have to go through all that coloring process. And then I have a few more pieces that I have to die cut, and then I should be good to go. Hi, Shonda. Hello, Isabel. How are you? So, um, I got a new die in, which is this piece right here, which I thought would be cool to add it in um, to the box. So, I'm going to cut a couple of these out so that I can kind of layer them up. It's not that big. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger. I, nonetheless, um, I so many different things. And are pieces that I pulled out. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use them all or if I'm going to go ahead and use them all. The box itself is um, pretty big. It's a smaller box than this before when I did my Finnebear style mixed media, but um, not too, too bad. I left it open because I'm not really sure if I'm going to leave it closed. I'm thinking that what I might do um, it's kind of like a little chest, if you will, that I can open it later on. Decorate everything, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna put anything here. Or if I put anything on one side, I won't glue it on the other, so that I can open the box up. And I think that I'll probably decorate the inside of this box on another. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do the whole outside of the box. I just sewed it already, and I used um, Deco Art. I can find it. Use. Deco Art Gesso, which is from their media line, um, to kind of cover the whole box and just get it primed. And this I did a little while ago, so it's nice and ready. I'm not going to spend too, too much time with the die cutting, but I am going to try to use up some of these Dollar Tree washi tapes that, as most of you guys know, are very cute to look at, but they're not really that great as far as using them on actual things because you kind of have to use double-sided tape. So I've amounted quite a few of them, so I thought, why not? Go ahead and use, um, you know, use the washi tape. And then I also received this other die, which is of a teacup, which I thought was really cute. And I thought that maybe since I'm going to have the Mad Hatter and he's always drinking coffee, 
that this will be like a nice little addition uh, to the box. That and then I already cut out the Mad Hatter. I used tape right here that says hello. Ready. I don't know if I showed that already, but I probably did. I got him ready to go. So I'm going to do the wrap it next and um, get that done. And I might do a couple more trees, but I'll do those later if I need them. I'm not really sure right now if I'm going to add any more trees than what I have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the rabbit. Now, I know that the rabbit is predominantly white. I'm going to do in order to keep most of his pieces white. I only want to focus mostly on this little piece right here. Um, which is like the little um, cloak thing that he wears uh, with the little hearts and pieces and stuff. So I'm mostly going to cover um, work on that. I'm not worried so much about their normal color scheme. I know that this is not their color scheme, um, but you know, this is like a whimsical kind of a box. So it can pretty much be any color that you want. So in order for me to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace so that I know exactly where I have to, um, you know, add the washi tape on or a pencil, you would think that with a plethora of things in front of you, essentials like pencils and pens would be easy to find, but no, they're not for the most part. Um, let me see if I can find something that is thin. I need a thin one and kind of uh, get into those little tight places with, so they should be fine. And of course, I put the one pen in the back. It doesn't work. <laughs> Here we go. Um, how is the feed? Is it lagging? Is it um? Is it buffering? Is it doing any of that crazy nonsense it was doing last time? Not like five times before I went on. So um. I'm out somewhat really quickly where his um this I'm gonna say is part of that. I'm not gonna trace the whole from not the whole thing, but I do want to get an idea at least of where are the areas that I need to add to. So most part I know Nope, I can't. Okay. All right, maybe. I, know, I think I'm just going to have to wing it. So, somewhere around here, right? This little piece right there. So, somewhere around here begins. So, I'll know not to. Um, he's got like a little trumpet thing here. And this is part of his shirt and hard to tell, but I'm going to say that this whole thing here is part of washing. Is it still buffering? Oh, man going on like it was working fine for a while and then it's like the curse of the heebie-jeebies so i'm gonna use this um right here it's nice and wide and hopefully it'll get a little bit better i don't know let me turn off the wi-fi on my phone maybe that'll help the Wi-Fi on here. Let me get my other phone. Cause we got like 15 devices in this house, all with Wi-Fi hooked up. I find all of my um, phones for right now. I don't have it on Wi-Fi per se. I have it on USB, but I mean not USB. I have it on um, you know, the regular Ethernet cable. And I'm not going to worry too much about texture on the cell. Mostly about getting that tape on. 
work well. I see it's kind of jumpy. Guys, bring down your resolution on the video. I have it at 720, but let me see mine because I know I usually have mine and I can still see that it's a little jumpy on mine. Okay, I got my quality at 480. Let me bring my quality down to 240 and see, because I don't necessarily need to see myself. I just need to be able to um, on the chat itself. So I think I'm pretty good there. And then he's got a trumpet at gold washi tape too. That'll do good right there. I'm gonna just kind of put it from right in here and see what happens. And I'm gonna give him gold shoes. He doesn't have shoes, all right? No, because he's a rabbit, so he doesn't have shoes. I can adjust. Um, Okay, where did you take me? And I'm going to bring it to um, 240. It helps out my... A little bit better. Still doing this. Uh, it's still in the same spot. That's why. Let me see. Crazy. I gotta do art and technic. Hi, Danielle. So I was actually talking to my um to my husband about what's gonna be happening for the upcoming month because you know the kids. At least in New York, the kids go back to school in September going to college now so that's not so much of a factor but my youngest is going to be going to um she's gonna be in the 10th grade so she's gonna be starting in september so i don't know about doing the live streams on wednesday so what i was thinking live streams on tuesday and thursday but do them during the day and then what I would like to do is dedicate those two days to card making and paper crafting. Hugs and pocket letters and, um, you know, do all kinds of paper crafting type things. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. Um, moving forward is I'm going to continue to have my Saturday evening. Because I'm going to school on Saturday, but have my uh, card making during the day in another part of the room of the house where I can actually use my heat tool um, and be able to do embossing and all of that stuff. And he's good to go with the idea. And that'll probably be starting in September when my youngest goes to school, starts going to school. Just because I don't like to interrupt her, um, you know, her flow of studies and cooking dinner and just all the other stuff that comes with the territory once, you know, kids start going to school. So that is probably what I'm going to be doing moving forward. Um, and maybe from there, did this all cut out well? I hope so. But I do see it's very jumpy. Can you guys hear me well at all? On a scale from one to 10, how bad is it? Run this again, just to be safe. One more time should do it for most of it. I have a lot of um, 
Jackson and all of this other stuff going on over here. So let's see how this did. Hopefully it did well. Hi, Michelle, a seven. It's about around a five. <laughs> then I'll definitely um, name this or something. All right, so I cut my little rabbit out. And at like a nine, I don't think anybody really gets a 10 unless you have a really, really high tech um, computer, which I do not. Cut out well, even with the washi, so that's a plus. I have those um, eBay dies. More gold tape, but I could probably do that after, or painted gold or something there. Um, piece out over here. Let's see. Doesn't seem to be too much attached, but it is a little bit. Let's see. So, my idea for this whole box is to do. I really wanted to use these um, these dies because um, Alice in Wonderland and just the whole story behind it. But I would um, definitely put these dies to use um, and create some kind of funky little in Wonderland situation. Um, I really like how that came out. This I'm gonna actually cover up because I have a bigger clock die and I have a stamp for it. So I'm actually going to cover that up and make the clock like humongous um, there. And I'm just going to leave that alone. Yes, I love it. So far, so good. <laughs> I'm going to save all these little pieces of hearts and stuff because I'll just add those throughout the um, throughout the piece. So I'm going to save these. These are pretty much ready to go. They're already washed out. So they're, they don't have to color them or nothing. And that was kind of why I wanted to do this this way, because I didn't have to color them. Um, because coloring does take some time. Especially when you have so many different elements. And I don't want to have to paint so much um that I take away from you know putting the thing together. So put these right here for now. So that's that. Now the one thing that I don't have is the cat. So I was talking to Brandy and Liz about suggested to me that I use an oval, but I thought I had one, and when I went to go check, I don't have an oval. I have uh, ovalish, but they kind of have, you know, angles and stuff. So that wasn't gonna work. It wasn't gonna work for me. At least not for this. So I'm, I'm debating right now if I should make him the background, like make him the sky, and just put his face on the sky, um, and do it that way. Because that's kind of what I'm, I'm gearing at right now is kind of doing it that way. Now, Alice, I don't have her really big. So I'm kind of debating on that right now also because I can just print her out and cut her out, which I think is what I might do. Um, and just add her in somewhere at the end. While I do the rest of this box. Because I do like it, but she's so teeny. And then compared to these guys, let's see. Small, so I think that that's gonna it's gonna get lost um, in the sauce. So I'm not gonna worry about her right now. What I am gonna do, I'm gonna die cut this bench. That I'm also going to um, cover the paper up in washi because that's what this whole theme is about today is um, having it up with some washi. And where did I put my washi tape box behind me? Yes, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to dig into all these stash. And the thing is that I, I had a small little box that I kind of put these together real quick. Like the things that I, the ones that I like the most, I would say, out of all of the ones that I have. But it's just a small little box. Like I have another container full and I have a, I have another bag here on the side of other ones. And it's just like, it's too much. And when the washi tapes first started like becoming popular on, you know, in Dollar Tree that they started coming and everybody started buying them. Like I was, I was in there. I was, of going ham and just buying buying up these washi tapes like crazy and just going crazy and i have a whole bunch of different patterns and stuff going on because i want this to be a very festive um kind of box 
dies and I go this way. Yeah. A very festive kind of box. So what I'm doing is just kind of going ahead and just adding a whole bunch of um, that I really don't care too much for because of their quality. Um, and trying to find ways to use them because they're not really good for flip books. Flip books together. I've tried that. One of my first flip books fell apart on me. <laughs> And I've had a couple other flip books fall apart of me that I've received, which is not the crafter's fault. You know, you're you're using them pretty much because they're pretty. Um, but when it comes to what they need to do, do the job the way they need to do the job. So they're cute for show and tell, but they're not really um, well overall. So I think I'm gonna do that that way. Where's my plate? So I'm like, you know what, let me try to use these for die cuts and just, um, you know, do a whole bunch of different ones and just cut them all out. And that way I have different colored die cuts and they have like that smooth plasticky surface, um, really prepped. And they look a little bit more expensive, right, than the regular, um, you know, the regular die cuts. So I'm going to have a mess, but it's going to all be worth it. Darius dies cut wonderfully. Like, isn't this super cute? You can use this chair pretty much on, on almost anything, and you will so definitely get away with it. Put it in a pack. Like, you can make this yourself. So this is definitely something you could do, especially with, like, dies, um, tapes that you don't really like so much. You know, sometimes things look better when they're cut down to smaller pieces. Um, like using your ugly paper for die cuts or small little embellishments. Sometimes they look beautiful on those kinds of things um, than just using the whole piece straight out. Don't want to be a washi hoarder anymore. I want to use up all this washi brandy as much as I possibly can and give away as much as I possibly can to somebody that knows how to, you know, to work with it because some of them are cute. Like I bought... Um, ones from eBay that I really like. Those are the, I don't know if I show you guys, but these are the new ones that I bought. Different, like, tape-wise is a little bit different. But now I know better. I know better than to construct with washi. Um, and this is more like that tissue paper um, type of washi tape. And now that's what I'm going to do as opposed to going postal at the Dollar Tree and, you know, pushing people out the way so I can get to the rack. I'm just gonna <laughs> let, them, let them take it, you know? Um, let them have it. Just buy, you know, one every now and a blue moon when I find one that's really cute and I must have it, but those days are over. <laughs> Yes, it's a cute bench. And let me tell you something. I really love these Darius dies. They're not expensive at all, I must say. These are not that expensive compared to other ones. Beautifully. And they even cut thicker paper um, because the ridges are so deep. Like the cut lines inside, they're so deep. They really cut well. So I have two trees and a bench from Darius. That's, that's as far as my Darius collection goes. But for a good, good price, Brian, you knock, you knock yourself out, like literally. Fight for that one. <laughs> Fight for that one. Um, oh, my clock. I think I'm going to make my clock. Um, this is one of the ones that I got from, from eBay, and I'm going to use this flamenco die. Um, flamenco die. Flamenco tape. I'm actually going to buy the flamenco die. I saw it on eBay because now that I have the tape, it's like, okay, I have the tape. I need the, <laughs> I need the die now. Um, hoarder and me talking to me. Sometimes I try to shut her down. I'm like, shh, quiet. Stop instigating me. But um, I'm going to use this one to make this clock. I think that that will be really interesting. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to get a whole bunch of odd pieces that normally would not go together and somehow try to marry them onto this board um, and create something that's very unique. So look how pretty. You can make like a whole sea of flamencos. Like, oh, love it. If I put enough tape on there, yeah, I should be fine. Tape is 
tape this down because I, I only put tape to a certain extent to certain spots. I want to make sure that it's um, you know well covered when I run it through my machine, my contraption. See, I saw you are also part of my inspiration, darling. Yes, you are. I saw the washi cards and they're really cute. A lot of people are making them now. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but I definitely plan on um, moving forward, adding that to one of my card making um, days. You guys know I can't give up my mixed media day because that is my oxygen my other creativity. I haven't cut this die out at all, so I'm really crossing my fingers right now, hoping that this die cuts out well. I used it. I just got it yesterday. <laughs> and I'm looking at this stuff today, and I'm like, I wonder what I should do. And I'm like, okay, Alice in Wonderland, you said you wanted to alter something, so alter that. Alter a box. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone because I'm going to have to kind of cut you right there. Got a lot of little pieces. I got to get me one of those little sticky roller thingies. Okay. I love it. Super cute. Okay. Messy, but super cute. I got to cut a little bit into this because it did not, um, or the hands and feet, whatever you call these things on clocks. I just want to make sure that I cut that out so that I do not lose that. That should be fine. Ugh, these are going to give me a little bit of a problem, I see already. Really debating cutting this down. Like this is gonna be a lot of little pieces to cut out, but um, it's a really cute die overall. Just takes a little bit of time. There's gotta be something that you can lay on these papers when you die cut that will pick up all these little bits and pieces for you. brushes and all these different um, utensils, but there's got to be some kind of tape that doesn't break down, some kind of paper or mat that does not break down, that is thin and does not interfere the pressure of your machine for, um, you know, your paper and your dye that'll pick up all these little tidbits so you're not having a mess all the time. It kind of takes away the fun from all the crafting of these little tidbits. Think and I'm done with this. So not too bad. I was trying to get myself a head start, but between prepping the box um, and getting everything else going, it on time. Um, so yeah. So this is really really cute. You guys won't be able to see that there. Better here. Look how adorable that is. And I love the flamingo. You can't really see none of the flamingos, but all the little bits and colors that's in it um, really make it nice. It's dye. And it cuts really well. I would recommend. It cuts really well. All of those other things on it, it did a pretty good job. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it straight through on regular paper so that I can mount it and make it thicker and pop out. Come on, baby. Like, yeah, this drives me crazy. Because I'll be ready to go. And I can't go because for me right now with all of this stuff. So let's see if I find a brush into the holes. Brush? Come on, man. Help me out. That doesn't work. These holes are so small. Good die. Tiny holes. That's a thing. 
you definitely need to get yourself a needle. So since I gotta get myself a needle, I'm gonna get myself a needle <clears throat> instead of wasting time here. I just think she's having a bad connection with her Wi-Fi. She said that her stream was really bad. So I think she's having a really bad connection. So I got myself a little needle here. And I'm gonna use that. I got like three little pieces in there, but I wanna make sure that this thing cuts through because I don't wanna be struggling with the paper or the machine. I just wanna be able to, you know, keep it going. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. It really sucks that I can't have music. Because I would have loved to have been crafting to some music. But just some nice, mellowing sounds. This one going, let me just go ahead and grab some cardstock. I'll finish off the same piece that I was using before. This should cut out a lot smoother because it doesn't have no, no washi, I mean, no washi tape on it or anything. Um, my thing is like crying. I've been doing so much die cutting. Here complaining. This one didn't cut out too well, actually. Let me get myself a piece of foam. So many things to do. If I can find you. Okay. Well, maybe not the foam, because I don't find the foam, and I saw it, and I don't find it now. Looking for it. So I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna keep it moving and I'm just gonna fold some paper over and run it through. In the bottom, if the other one cuts over on top, if anything, or I'll just use um, the next two pieces that come out. It depends. I think any music or beat or rhythm that has been used commercially by a company or anything like that, I think those are not okay to use. Um, and the ones that the YouTube offers suck. <laughs> and the good ones are hard to find. And the thing is like before, and the reason why a lot of the music that I've played now is really whack <laughs> and I'm not embarrassed to say because it's not my music, but it's really bad because before before this, I actually used to go onto this website um, and get my music from there. And it was really good. But as artists, um, go and buy the songs or buy the, the, the beats and the music or whatever to use the music, then they become like then you're copyright infringing or whatever you call it. So I had to take down, I lost monetization on a lot of videos because of that. So, bother. I don't even bother anymore. So I just try to use the, the ones that YouTube provides. A few of them, they have really good beats. Like there's not many. Um, that's another thing that's kind of turned me off from, because I'm not really a talker when it comes to my videos. Show you guys something or describe something to you. Like if I'm just creating, like I'll just make my video just creating, um, which is mostly what I do. I create a lot better, believe it or not, when I'm in total, you will, or even if it's not in silence, but like when I'm just focused on what I'm doing. So like I would just, you know, craft and not really talk. Um, so I will try to get music for it. Now, now there's one website that does offer you free music as far as I know. It's called purpleplanet.com. Um, and I, I've gotten some songs from there. Now, they don't have any words for the most part. 
Um, but they've got some, you know, pretty funky beats, if you will. Something a little bit upbeat. Since my videos can run a little long, um, I have to pretty much keep adding and just editing is a nightmare sometimes. It takes so long. Because I have to add, you know, every song after every other song after every other song. And when you're doing a 30 minute video with song after song and the song is only two and a half minutes, lucky, it becomes a pain in the butt. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, it has to be royalty free. But like I said, you could put up a song that's royalty free today and then not be royalty free tomorrow you you know that you take when um you do this and this is why i'm like oh so i've i've kind of dedicated more to doing live as opposed to doing those kinds of videos doing them a lot of it had to do with time but even when i found myself with time and i was like okay let me record something like just having to go through the nightmare of finding music for it that didn't put me to sleep was just like oh lord help me couldn't do it. Um, so I kind of gave up on that dream rather quickly. Okay, the last thing that I have to do here for right now um, is my, I'm going to glitterize him. I'm going to glitterize him. I'm going to put ice crystal glitter all over him. Face too, I think. I'm not sure. But I'm going to ice crystal um, glitterize him all over the place. The last thing I have to do is the little teacup, I think, um, and the clock which I can do these together at the same time. And then this banner, I was trying to cut out um, Chester's, whatever, Chest side, Chest Shire, whatever his name is, the funky cat. I was trying to cut out his teeth and then I broke one. He chipped the tooth. I have another one here that I'm gonna try to uh, cut and hopefully not lose a tooth on this one. And this banner is gonna become his smile. I do decide to go into doing it in the background. I'm gonna leave those there, but yeah, that's what's gonna happen for right now. So I'm just gonna cut this in half because waste not, want not, right? And these are small dies, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm just gonna get some little, uh, I'm gonna make it gold. I'm gonna make it a gold teacup. Is that what I'm gonna do with it? Teacup, yeah, I'm gonna make it a gold teacup. Gold or purple? Gold. Let's see what happens. These are all Dollar, I'm um, not Dollar Tree. These are all eBay, um, eBay washi tapes. And I know you guys don't see me use a lot of washi tape that I make. I'm really a washi tape fanatic. Um, I like it for planning. Um, I like using washi tape on there, but even when I do my planner, I find myself mostly um, kind of freestyling it, which means I paint, I watercolor on it, um, you know, I go more or less that route. I think I'm going to add a different um, color washi tapes here. I won this, and I've been hoarding this washi tape because I like it. It's so pretty. From um, Cassandra here on YouTube last year, and I've just been hoarding the life out of it, honestly. <laughs> I try not to use it. It's still whole almost, and when you get it, it's like, you're so special to me because I gave you some of my special washi tape. And these washi tapes are not the greatest. So hopefully, uh, this will hold. And I think that's like from Target or something. I don't even know. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put this in here. And I think that that'll look cute in there. This little teacup. Yes, it is. It is a lot of work. <laughs> oh, that's not my idea. That's Brandy's right there. Um, Brandy's and Liz, uh, who is very crafty bonnet, they're the ones that told me 
do this, do this, do this. Because whenever I feel stuck, I can always count on them to give me some awesome ideas. And I, I was like, I don't have, I don't have him. Like I don't have him as a die. And brought him out yet, you know, to the collection. Okay, this tape is not really trying to work with me, but we're gonna make it do. So I'm asking them like, oh, what am I gonna do? Like I don't have him as a cat. And I've done a mixed media piece before with him, but he was huge. So use that because it's just way too big. Um, so right, she was like, do do his teeth in a banner. I was like, what? Genius. Yes. And an oval. The oval where they killed me though, because I don't have an oval. <laughs> that I don't have. I don't have an oval, but. I'm going to figure it out. I think, like I said, I'm just going to use his smile and his big, bright, bright eyes um, in, the, in the misty kind of background. Um, and then I'm going to decorate most of this box with washi tape. Most of this extra here. If it'll let me. It did not finish cutting out. And then I'm just going to move this sideways and I'm going to slide it over here. Now this mat is magnetized on the cuddle bug. So a little bit to um, keep the dye itself in place, even if it doesn't keep anything else in place, i.e. the paper. So this is why I have to do this very, very carefully. But this will help me to get those little pressure points that I couldn't get before. Cut out my teacup in its entirety. I think that did the trick. And hopefully, by me running it through the machine with the washi tape already on the paper, it'll help. It'll help it adhere a little bit better. Where's my little pokey tool? Hi for me. Don't get jealous. I still love you. Not for everything, but for some things. This kind of came out. He's so pretty. And this has an, this is another one with a lot of little tidbits. This is a beautiful teacup of uh, filigree type details in it, which I really like. It's going to be. Um, Taking the pieces off without ruining or removing the excess, you know, the washi tape is on top because it does have so many intricate pieces. The nice little background, nice little background of it, it'll look really nice. Now, for this one, since I did layer. Um, some of these washi tapes, when I do pick out the pieces, some of them do want to come out on a pull on the washi tape that's above it or beneath it. So that's a little bit of an issue, but I'm not sure about your washi tape sticking and you want to do this kind of design where you're multi-layering different color washies, then um, that you um, put some double-sided tape, you know, on your paper first and then lay your washi tapes over it. So you're sure not to pull away at your design once you're done with the thing through the machine. But I can even use all these little intricate pieces. I just have to make sure that um uh, come on baby. See like I had double layered it, so I lost the whole layer right there. tape that whole layer of tape right there because I double layered it that was probably not a smart idea to put so much over one over the other but I got to keep most of the design so I'm okay for me I have this right here which I do use often these are my skewers I buy them by the pack of like a hundred um, and I use them for dowels and just making odds and ends and stuff like that whenever I need to make like a more floating. What, what started happening is, is that the tips 
on some of the dyes, the tips was breaking off. So I just got upset and was like, fuzz it. About it right now. So on some of them, I do use that because it's got a really fine tip. It's got a really fine um, little spot. But these dyes from eBay and AliExpress, some of those little holes, so it's really hard. So this is hot. And I lost some of the pink tape that was here, but it's okay because it's still got enough pink here and there um, to still give it some level of elegance overall. Not too bad. Now, am I sure that this is going to hold? No. I'm not sure. But hopefully she will. Overall. So I think that's about it. Is it? Nope, I have one more thing to do. And that's the little clock piece that I'm going to be adding on to him. I'll gather up all of the die cuts that I have. I'm only going to cut out the one cup. Probably, um, I'm going to see where everything is going to go. And then I'm going to start gluing some pieces onto uh, the board as far as like little um, dimensional things like screws and wires. And what I did is, um, gathered some things here. I gathered some things here. This is just foam that I found. Um, but I found this bulb and it probably belonged to something I didn't have because I thought that I can turn it I can turn it into like a like a balloon. Like a little basket, put a little basket, glue this onto the thing and just add like a little basket one on each side. So I don't know. Um, that's something that I'm thinking about. I found some wires that I don't know if I'm going to use or not. And I found some screws and this little thing that used to be part of a headphone. Um, and then some screws and some bolts and just stuff that I find in my drawers and my kitchen drawers mostly because I, I usually put all my tidbits like that in my kitchen drawer. Um, but I found some screws and stuff that I'm probably going to try to glue on there. That'll be that. And I also found like this braid, um, braided hair thing. And I figure if it's in the drawer and nobody's using it, it's because nobody wants it, so it's coming with me. I'm gonna use that, and then with the, with this, and then probably make some kind of a basket. I don't know. So we'll see where we go from there. We'll see where we go from there. I have one more thing to die cut, right? Just one more. Yep, it's this little clock right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess, and then we're gonna start. A assembling you guys and figuring out where everything is going to be and how everything is going to look. I know I do that too and usually what I do um, Shonda is that like when I buy my dyes I'll go store by store so if I go to one person and I see that they have a dye that I like store like i'll hit their name and i'll just go to their store and i'll see all the dyes that they have and um that way i get more than one you know from one but sometimes you know you don't get lucky sometimes they just have that one cute die that's the case i mean if i wanted that bad i'll just order it like from that seller i only got that one thing so i must not have found anything else i like from their store but lately, I've been doing a lot of the shopping from my phone, which doesn't allow me to, um, I can either pay for everything at once, the different stuff that I put in my car, or pay for them individually. Either I can go, you know, pay this seller, pay that seller, and not pay all of them. Um, but from my phone, I only have the option of, um, or none of them. So what I have to do is that I put stuff in my car and then I go to my car and then I go back to the item and then I order and then I go back to my car and take it out. If I'm, you know, <laughs> being crazy and don't want to go on my laptop, which hearing how much work I'm doing, I might as well just do it on my laptop. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I, what I do for the most part is just do it like that. Like when I'm like in bed or... I'm just trying to fall asleep and I can't fall asleep. I'll shop. I know this is so bad. 
mostly I do it because he's sleeping, so he can't see me shop. But when I do it on my laptop, it's open and it's in the, you know, I have it like on a little stand right here next to me. So he sees where I'm on and he's like, aha, uh-huh, you're on eBay. So <laughs> I kind of have to um, figure out how to do this a different way. Yeah. And then I figured out an easier way to kind of get these little things off. Um, get my table cleaned up rather quickly. I buy a dollar roll cheap tape and clean it. Hi, Teresa. Yes, easy peasy and I'm done. <laughs> yes, it is, right? It's like, what the heck? Why can't you just pay one seller at a time? Like, they should have that option. You have that option when you do it through your browser, like, you know, your regular computer, but you don't have that option when you do it um, through that. So that's a little bit annoying. But I mean, I guess, you know, it's cheap enough that some things, you know, they kind of make you work harder for the cheaper things, you know, when they cost less. So I don't know. So I'm trying to figure out what washi tape to use with this clock. I think I'm going to use this dotted one right here. I'm going to use this dotted one right here. So, And after this little piece is done, then I can start kind of assembling um, or bringing to fruition this little nagging idea that I have in my head. So let's see if it all comes together. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't, but all you can do is try. There's never any loss in learning something, you know? And this is a Hero Arts um, die, and it comes with a stamp that I have over here, although I don't think I'm going to use the stamp. I'm not sure. I might use the stamp. Maybe I'll just use a hole punch and stamp out some of it, and that way I could put the little center with the clock piece on it. I just want everything to be kind of funky, um, kind of colorful. I got all this tape all over the place. I want it to be all be kind of funky and colorful to kind of, um, you know, do all kinds of weird, funky stuff. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Um, let me pull out the stamp for this so that I don't forget to do that. So my camera might shake a little bit, you guys, um, while I find the stamp, if I find the stamp. I'm just trying to figure out where the heck I put it because it's got to be on one of these. Um, I don't think it's this one. I deal with my little darlings uh, stamps. I not all of them, just the ones that I I know I'm gonna be using a lot, uh, for the most part. After I cut them down, I use that glue, and now I have them all clinged in there. The only thing that this is needing, um, is my dividers, which, um, I have my other ones divided up and categorized. It's not in this one, which you're about to see because it's not in the small one. This is the big mama jamma. Two inches, three inches almost. I can't even see. Ugh. This is a two inch, right? Two and a half inch binder, um, D ring. And I have it all categorized for the most part. So hopefully I'll remember how I categorize them and I'll be able to find this stamp rather quickly. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, made my own, uh, you know, my own categories, oddities, um, which are just weird things that, um, you know, like candelier, some chandeliers and candelabras, um, stuff that I would not use, even though those would probably be in clothing. And this is called Once Upon a Time, Symbols and Numbers. So my clock is in my symbols and numbers because it's a clock and it has numbers. And it's got the symbol of a hand. <laughs> so that is my the way my mind kind of works. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit off, but I can find things. But it I have so much, you guys. This thing is jam-packed. Um full. Dollar tree. Well, I was using these, which are the Dollar Tree, the little plastic ones, but I don't really like those so much. So I went ahead and got me the highest, you know, the, the more um, better ones, the paper ones, because at least they don't stick so much to the paper. A piece of card stuck behind um, or in front of every single stamp set. And the ones that I couldn't tell, like the words, that I couldn't tell what the words say, because, you know, they're backwards, then I stamped those out onto the card stock themselves. 
and um, use the three hole binds uh, punch and got that going that way. Snaps pretty much in three binders right now, which is pretty good. So I have this and let's do is just stamp this out real quick. Um, but before I stamp it out, I got a hole punch it. So let me see if I can find a hole punch uh, sooner rather than later. And I think this will work. I try to have all my things as divided up as I possibly can, even though I know that's a little hard to do sometimes. Um, I try to have my things in a certain kind of way that at least my mind can understand it. I tend to remember where I put things for the most part. Crazy when I'm like, I just saw you. What you mean you're not here? Um, but yeah. <laughs> See, what, ha what ha happened was Brandy with that whole situation is like, I have my password um, set up on my laptop, but and I have it set up on the app, but I don't remember it. So when I go to um, go to use like the browser, like sometimes I'll click on something that I want to see and it'll take me to, you know, the browser version. I can't log in because I don't remember my password. So it's like, oh, I can't even add it to a cart because I don't remember the dang password. So, all right. Um, work. I just want the emphasis of the clock. And then I'm just going to fuzzy cut this. Well, not fuzzy cut, you know, punch this out, out of there. That's going to go on my clock. So that's that. Alrighty, so enough of the craziness. Let's get into this box. So I'm gonna leave that right there because I have to put that stamp back where it goes. And I found me my other one that I was looking for that day, and it wasn't my stamping tool, which I kind of figured, but you know how that goes, right? Over here, that I'm going to just move to the side so that I only have my pieces that I need exposed putting this baby together uh it's a wrap as they say so a lot of this stuff is gonna have a lot of washi tape like this is what i'm gonna this is my goal for the whole thing is to cover a lot of it up in washi tape i do i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna start the scene i think i'm gonna start the scene from back here um so that it's kind of in the back and eventually this is gonna open up and I'm gonna decorate the inside. I think that's what I'm gonna do and probably make like little shelvings or something in the inside. And this is probably gonna be like a little box um, that I have either decorated or figured out something. So if I end up doing that, cause I'm really not sure. If I don't do that, then chances are that I'll just close off the front. Um, you know, I'll add something that'll just keep the front closed. But for the most part, I think I'm gonna work on the back and way I want to do this because if I leave it open then I could I have to work on this vertically then I can do it horizontally so I don't know yes I hate passwords too but unfortunately well fortunately and unfortunately because if you don't have passwords then all your stuff gets stolen unfortunately passwords then you can kind of salvage it so I'm trying to see I'm trying to see how I'm gonna do this green paper just kind of fell out of nowhere so use it because i need some pills or something right um of course in the mouth that's what they say or something like that right i guess you can but it wouldn't be nice so let's see um, at this right here as some kind of hilly area and then where are my people i have one people person here um and alice i don't know what i'm gonna do with alice i didn't put alice in here um so i'm trying to see kind of like how i do this because this is not really a lot of space for all the elements that i want to put in um where's my trees some washi trees right here <clears throat> that I can go ahead and kind of add behind that. 
have another washi tree over here. Like I was thinking about doing this on a canvas earlier, but I know with a box you can just go so much, you can do so much more because of the, just it being, you know, you can go all the way around, you know, 360 with it. Or this is, I could probably think one tree will be good enough um, for this. I have that. Where's my Mad Hatter guy? Him here in front of this little bench. Like, hey, I've been waiting for you. What's going on, man? You're blowing this one, but you're not calling me? Like, when's lunchtime? So he's kind of like calling him and he's like coming to him. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, and then the little clock thing that I cut out. Let me put this die cut there. Let me glue this onto one another. Where's my glue? Right here. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. I didn't even see you there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do this. And this is the thing. I want to... Um, I'm debating now, honestly. I'm debating. I want to do this box, but I think... Um, it over to a canvas, you guys, only because I have more room to add more details. And this is pretty blank still. I have this canvas here, which is just calling my name. It's calling my name. And I know that this canvas is big enough that I can um, put all these pieces in here and pretty much make this look cool. And I could put just a cat in the background, just like I kind of want to do be able to fit in there so i think what i'm going to do with this box i'm going to do what i want to do as far as turning it into some kind of a shelving i'm not shelving but like a little storage case like a little cabinet and i'm going to alter this probably on another um on another day so i already have the box prepped so that'll give me time to get some chains and do something because i want to make it kind of um steampunk ish i'm going to do this next time I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Bye, Deb. Um, I think I'm going to go for the canvas today, girl. I'm going to leave this box for another time because I, I have so many pieces and I want to add all these pieces in here. Canvas right here is from, believe it or not, Dollar General. I paid three bucks for it. I don't know if that's a good price or a bad price, but it's 14 inches by 11 inches. Um, I'm not going to worry about it being primed or prepped or ready to go or not. I'm just going to do what I came to do right on here and i think that'll be a lot better it'll give me a lot more room in the meanwhile hook up my printer two seconds it'll take me to get my printer going and print out uh, alice do it dang it i can't do it i can't do it all right there goes that idea because if I hook up my printer, then I'm going to go mute because my my microphone is USB and my computer only has two openings for USB. So there goes that idea. Um, so as far as Alice is concerned, what can I do? Oh, I'm wondering if Alice is missing. Hmm. I'll see what I do. I think I have uh, one of the um, gorgeous, not gorgeous girls, one of those precious moments girls there that I can go ahead and use up. So let me put all these things to the side. Her in um, and wash her down and just leave her face exposed so that I can give her some skin tone. And then wash her down and um, cut her out after I. Out. So I'm going to stack all of these things together and just kind of put them here. I'm going to go ahead and. Um, get some paints. Um, the Chester cat, I want to use this banner thing, but um, let me see if I can get his teeth out. This part glued on, and this will tell me more or less where I can go ahead and put the rest of my pieces in. Ugh. Yeah, I think I might have to... Um, Put her in there because she does get really tiny too. So there is a part in the movie where she eats a little carrot cake. I me mean, petrified of carrot cake for a long time, by the way. I thought I was gonna shrink. 
carrot cake is so yummy. I love carrot cake. All right, so let me see if I can find my little scissor. I'll fuzzy cut, I mean, I'll cut her out after. I need to trace this baby out and I need to cut this baby out. So I don't have my small scissor. I'm going to have to use this behemoth. And I'm um, just seeing if I can. So this. It's these stars that kind of mess it up for me. Because um they they break the thing apart, so I should have washi taped this in the back, but it was gonna cut to the washi tape anyway, so either way. I could have just painted this part in, which I'm going to have to paint over this anyway, so that kind of like that indication of where, where the teeth are going to go. And it's about using the stuff that you have sometimes, you know? Let's see. Okay, so this one didn't do too bad. I was able to, um, so I'm going to go ahead and where's the little stars right here, this one, I probably lost the other little stars somewhere along the way. And this is going to be right here. It is. So uh, uh, that's not going to be my excuse. That is going to be my excuse that everything in this story is a little off. So don't worry. Everything will be fine. Um, so I think that'll be good right there. And what I'm going to actually do, I'm trying to see if I should just use this as a stencil, which I think is what I'm going to do. And I could just use the piece that it came out of as a stencil and not go crazy. Carmen, 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 what are we doing? I think I'm going to cut one out and use this, the piece that that came out of as a stencil and stencil her smile, the smile in. That after. So you see what happens, right? The mind starts kind of working. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting this. And then I'm going to, I have to cut Alice out anyway. So when I cut Alice out, I'll cut another banner piece out. I'll use the negative for a stencil to stencil in this area here um, for this teeth. And then if anything, I'll glue this back onto it so that it gives it a little bit of dimension and pop, but at least I'll have that already in there just in case I want to make them a little bit longer or I want to change the smile up somehow, some way that I have the freedom to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting this baby. Yes, it is a great excuse. It's like, hello, we're all mad here. So people are just off in every direction. They're all in different sizes. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So I'm thinking about an orangey kind of sky because Chester Cheetah is kind of orangey when he comes in. So like a fall, like fall colors, I guess, because since it is at about that time, um, we're getting ready there in pumpkin patch. Um, I'm going to get some yellow. These are all different paints. One of them is chalk, satin. They're all different paints. I, I'm the kind of person that I don't care so much about the texture of the paint. I care, some, I care much more about the color, unless I'm trying to blend certain things together, and I know that it's not going to work. Um, so, because I also want to add the little balloon. It is going to be kind of off here to the side somewhere. Little things that I want to add on to this thing. And I won't be able to do that. I won't be able to do that just like that. So this right here is a little bit of chalky paint. 
which will help me to kind of draw any details in because it, it has tooth to it. So if I want to sketch in an area pencil, I can do it and it's not going to block that. As opposed to just the regular, you know, regular acrylic paints, um, you can't really draw with pencil over that unless you're using the Stabilo or whatever that, um, whatever that marker is that that pencil is called. This is satin. Also the same with this. You can't write over this with regular pencil. So I'm going to start with a little bit and just kind of see how it goes. No idea. I'm not one for color palettes, as you guys probably noticed by now. I just do whatever um, and pray. <laughs> That's kind of how I paint. Um, I got to paint, and I didn't bring water with me, so I need to get some water eventually. I have stuff everywhere organized but i'm like not organized at all honestly i try to be i think i'm ocd about the idea of being organized but not so much that actually being organized so start with um adding yellow i didn't even wet my brush i'm just gonna gonna kind of just add this in there and i'm gonna bring it all the way down to where i assume the horizon is, which is somewhere down here. I'm just going to add that yellow in there. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, very dark kind of color that way. Just call him Chester Cheetah. <laughs> probably, probably. You peel it off very carefully, uh, Michelle. That's how I did it. You just peel it off very carefully. So I'm just dry brushing on here. All of these normal um, blue skies work fine for some things. But since this is La La Land and everybody here is cuckoo, um, I think. I just love the sound of brushing against canvas. Tell my friends that I go live. They don't watch my, my, um, or none of that. At least I don't think they do. Um, and then I'm live during six o'clock from six to nine on Saturdays. And guess when the guess when they want to talk to me? They don't know. They don't they don't text me or call me on Friday. No, why would they do that? They want to call me and text me when I'm live because that's just how it is. <laughs> People are funny. I'm gonna get some pink. I think pink will go well in there. I think, I hope. Just something weird. Adding weird tones, weird colors. Weird, weird. I just don't want no blue. I got another pink right here, a lighter pink. Um, it's like a neon pink. Let's see what happens. This is flamenco. <laughs> yes, I love painting. I love painting on anything and everything. <laughs> It is, for me, one of the most relaxing things that I can do is paint. Pink, because I don't want to overwhelm it with pink. Um, since I am kind of dry brushing everything, which means I'm not using any water at all because I forgot to bring the water. It's going to just add it. And you could just kind of go crazy. I love using, um, I love painting also, like my cards and stuff like that. Um, it's just. I love adding paint elements. I love the texture of paint. I love the smell um, of some paints, not all paints. I'm not one of those. I'm not a paint sniffer. <laughs> but I do love, um, uh, you know, the different texture, the different feelings. 
like I like how the chalk paint feels. Um, I like the fact that it allows me to uh, need more yellow. It allows me to um, draw. Sorry, I'm talking with a brush around. It's almost like talking with your mouth full. Um, <laughs> so I, I love the the way that um the way they smell. Um, the way that it looks after it's all done. So I'm just adding little hints of pink here and there, um, mixing it in with some yellow, some oranges, um, just making this very kind of bright and festive, um, getting a little darker as I go down a little bit. And it mixes really nicely with that pink that I chose, that flamenco. Um, <laughs> so hopefully um, this will kind of pique you guys' interest a little bit. I say it's never too late to pick up a brush. And you don't have to be any kind of expert because I am no kind of expert at all, at all. I never went to school for it. I've watched people painting. My favorite thing was watching Ross. I was addicted to the channel 13 and watching him kind of do his thing. But other than that, it's not, um, it's not something that I'm like, oh, you know, let me go to school for this and let me go to school. I didn't go to school for any of this. I guess I put my heart out and I guess that's the best way that I can describe it is I just allow myself to kind of be, um, I just put it down. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, I just put it down. Like, I don't even, um, I don't think too much about it. I don't think of techniques or forms or, you know, blending or color theories. I don't think about none of that. That is kind of. I don't want to say that it's irrelevant because it's not irrelevant. It's a very important part um, of painting and being a painter is knowing your colors and together and what doesn't. But honestly, who would have thought that you could add pink to orange and you will get a beautiful hue? I didn't think about it. I was just like, let me do it. And that's kind of how I learn. I learn by trying. I'm the kind of person that I try to build the things without reading the instructions. And if I don't get it the first time, then I'll go back and read the instructions, which I know is kind of, you know, half ass backwards. You know, at least that's what my husband says. <laughs> but um, that's just kind of the person that I am. I overthink it too much. And I don't want to oversimplify it, but I don't want to overcomplicate it either. So my advice would just be to just do it. Just do it. Just do it and just have fun. Don't over criticize yourself. Don't overwork it. Work everything, but that's a person with OCD telling you not to overwork it. Understand how that goes because I'm a little bit maniacal for some things. Um, not for others, but for some. some of these because I know I'm not going to use all this um, darker I'm um, like pumpkin spice color uh, gonna add it to the to the sides so that I don't have to put it back in the jar and this paint dries really really fast so you don't have to go too nuts with um, waiting time and drying time And I really like how this is coming out so far. Like who would know, right? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about it. I mean, I, I thought about it now, but if you was to ask me on a normal day, about orange and pink together, I'd be like, ew. See, that would be probably the first thing that comes out of my mouth, like pink and orange, like what the heck? Like, are you kidding? But surprisingly enough, little bits of colors and this is like the same thing i was saying about like ugly paper cutting things down to smaller sizes that are not your favorite sometimes 
putting those elements down in, in smaller portions can make something beautiful or something that you actually really like. Um, as opposed to kind of, uh, you know, doing it larger scale, sometimes it's harder to see um, the beauty in it because it's, it's so large and it's like so much ugliness in one spot. <laughs> so, you know, but um, so far, this kind of works. And I did the whole canvas like this because um, I'm going to be paper collaging some pieces in the bottom. So I am okay with um, I'm okay with the whole thing just kind of being painted. Put more pink and then I'm done with this. And I'm not going to worry too much about painting all of the sides because I want to focus mostly on the front. Um, but I do want to kind of just add. And I'm not adding too much pressure. I'm just allowing the paint to kind of go where it wants to go. Um, roll off and then I'm just lightly dusting it over to just let it kind of blend in with whatever paint is still wet. If you want your paint to blend a little bit more, then try to do it while it's still wet. The, the drier becomes, the harder it is for you to kind of blend. You'll just be layering colors when it's acrylics we're talking about. But other than that, um, not too shabby. Not too shabby. This is why I had to dedicate a day for just for me to be able to include paint because I had to paint at least once a week. At least once a week, I have to be able to paint or I start like shaking. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. Okay, I have water here, which I, I have this little spritzer that I'm just gonna pour, um, pour some water. I'm gonna pour that water right out. And just clean my brush off. Don't leave your brushes wet. I mean, yeah, in the water for, you know, more than 30 seconds. It will warp, damage your brush this down really quickly because I love this brush. It's one of my favorites. And it's a deco art brush. Um, it's deco art oval. Or it's a three quarter. It's a three quarter oval uh, deco art brush. But I just love the way it paints. I've learned to, you know, uh, if I love a tool, if I love what it does for me, then I have to take care of that tool. So I'm learning to better take care of my brushes to get more life out of them because I was crazy before and I would just leave them in water overnight and then come in the morning and they're like this. <laughs> I'm like, why are my brushes like this? I can't fix it. So, okay. I have some stamping to this. Yes. Can you guys see that wall? Because I don't, I mean, I don't know how it looks um, on you guys' end because I know experience is a little different but okay so like I said this dries really quickly I have um stamps that I got from eBay this one has like a little tree and a little bunny rabbit, which I think I'm going to use the little bunny rabbit and add it somewhere in there. I um, mean, it just has a whole bunch of cute little sentiments. It's pretty much a bear tree with like all these little leaves and things on it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one per se, except for maybe the little bunny. But I, have, <clears throat> I got a new uh, stamp with scripts on it. And honestly, I think this is like a Heidi Swap knockoff, if I'm not mistaken. So I think I saw this um, stamp set. I think I saw this as being one of her stamp sets, but but it's definitely um, I don't know if it's the same size or not, but it looks like it's definitely one of those collections. But I paid a dollar dollar ten, I think a dollar twenty for this. So to now, okay, this is interesting. It's like a sticker on here. Okay, so it's got it's got good cling on it, so that's a good thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and just stamp some of this out just to give it some kind of um, interest in the background. 
Um, and since this is kind of like mixed media in a way because of all the different things that we're adding into it, I'm not going to go too crazy and I'm not going to worry so much about per perfect lines, just markings more or less um, is what I'm kind of going for. And since I didn't do any, whatchamacallit, I didn't do any modeling paste or stenciling of that kind, I'm just going to add some interest to the um, to the canvas the background by just kind of stamping in some of these little and so on. And a lot of this is going to be covered up because once I go ahead and start adding, um, you know, just some of the things that I'm going to be adding into it, then it'll be covered up. But you'll be able to see it in some areas, even if you can't see it on all of them. So that's stuff for that. All right, so we have this. Now we can start kind of assembling and putting in all of our different little elements and pieces. Once I have my bottom set up, then I'll go ahead and, um, well, no, actually, I think I should die cut first. So let me go ahead and die cut. Give that also an extra minute to finish um, drawing uh, all the way. Dun, dun, dun. Get my little plate combination going. Such a messy, messy little machine. Going on for two years. And I know she's screaming for replacement, but I can't replace her just yet. Not yet, darling. We still have more life to live. So I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, which is... Um, Kind of trace this out just a little bit and let me get this out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Up a little bit. Um, I'm going to trace it out just a little bit so that I can get different pieces of um, washi tape in different areas. So she's got some level of interest. Plus, it's got the quote which says, We're mad here as part of um, her little situation. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this part of it inside of the cup. So it's going to be kind of like this. So I'm going to get some kind of matting or something to put on this cup. Um, my watch is like this coming out. Take out all together, this pink strip right here. Because it just keeps peeling. This is so bad. See what I tell you about those chippy choppy tapes? <laughs> well, once I'm done, I'm going to mod podge it. So hopefully that'll help seal it all down. It's not working for me. So um, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to teacup like she's coming out of it um land ride if any of you guys have been to disneyland before they got that little ride where um hang around in the all right so so i'm just gonna give her a quick trace um just so that i know where she begins and where she ends so that i know where all the other uh, where I got to put all the other tapes at and I know where her dress is and her legs are and where the words begin because those words are going to go in a different color uh, than she is I think for her um, she's kind of in blue if I recall correctly uh, uh, a stamp by the um, that company that sold all those blue stamps that I just showed you guys. I'm not much of a stamp buyer when it comes to like going to those stores and buying those stamps. I only get them when they're like ridiculously on sale like they were with that one. Other than that, I normally don't do those. Okay, I got I got a watch tape for that. Um, so I got this one. This is another um, eBay. It's gonna go really, really well, especially like on this um, teapot here. And let me just look at the inside of this. So she's kind of got her little hand right there and then here on out. We have um, this situation happening here. And again, some of these washi tapes do stick better than others. Um, are not that great. I've used wash some washi tape that did a really nice job when it came to um, down and when I die cut them they work perfect and then I have others that 
it's just not the greatest. With my little scissor, I love scissors, so I kind of have a, a gazillion, a gazillion scissors. So yeah, <laughs> I think for her dress, I'm gonna go with this floral one. No, it's like hearts. So go with this one. This is going to be a mod podge of just different stuff happening. And I'm leaving her head exposed um, because I'll probably end up coloring that in. I just don't know what color yet. And then we're all mad here. I got to put that in a print that will show. So maybe this text right here. And I'm not going to worry about this white part here because, again, that's going to go in to the teacup that I'm going to cut out. So let me cut this part out and we're going. And then I'll do um, the banner piece stencil. Stenciling, I'll get the banner piece out. And then for that one, I got to figure out what color. It's going to be white, so I don't have to figure nothing out. <laughs> that makes it easy enough for me. Um, so let's see here. That there. And let's. Let's get you there. One more piece to make sure that you're nice and secure. <clears throat> so I already got my canvas painting. The rest of it is just um, kind of putting everything together. So hopefully I can do this canvas with good timing. What I want to do is with the other box, um, I want to, whatchamacallit, I want to do a whole, um, like a chest cabinet type of type of a situation. So I got a little out of the lines there, but that's okay. Kind of get the idea here. So we have her all kind of dressed up to so this whole thing here. And I have enough, I think, yeah, I covered this up enough so I can actually cut this little piece out. Where's my cover this little piece out right here. Little piece of her dress right here. So it's not that bad. And then leave that there. Little teacup. I have her little dress there. And this is like the little lid. Of this I'm not worried about. This is going to be hidden. This part right here and her hair right here, I'm going to color um, in yellow or I'll paint it gold or something or the other. Go ahead and get my banner piece in there so that I can stencil this in. And then we can get the rest of this canvas kind of on the go.
This is the one time that I'm not really worried about this part right here because I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna use this first stencil anyway, so. All right, so I'm gonna put this little banner thingy here to the side. I really have no idea how I'm going to do this, to be honest with you. I need to start thinking things through a little bit better. <laughs> Thanks for hanging. Um, so let's see. Maybe I can just look at his picture. He's got a really wicked uh, kind of smile. So let me go ahead and put some of these pieces down and then figure the rest of this out. I can kind of see where this is going to go while my mind starts thinking about how I'm going to do this cat. I would have really loved to have had the negative and the positive on that um, on that whole thing. Put this down here. I'm gonna put this tree up there because it's gonna be kind of like on a hill. Put this other tree somewhere back here. Up on another hill. I have her sticking out of a teacup, which I'm going to have to tra trace out of some kind of paper in there. This is just a lot going on. Take this tree out. There. She's got to be facing somebody because she's looking that way. So the little rabbit, which I have to paint still. He's kind of coming from over here and she's kind of over there. So kind of that way and here, I think those two little trees right there, give it that kind of little pop of color in the background. Um, clock. I need to have him high up so that I can put this clock kind of there. And I think this tree didn't cut out right. Well, it cut out right, just didn't put enough washi. And that's pretty much it for those pieces. That gets used up quick. More. I thought it was so much more. But... Alrighty, let me get some paper so that I can um, kind of do my little lawn area here. And I thought I was going to be able to use that green one, but it's actually not that long. Um, so I have a piece here. I have this piece right here that I have left over from one of my other projects that I was working on. So this is from the butterfly paper. So I think actually, well, so I'm just going to round this, kind of round this out a little bit. Kind of like so. <clears throat> Make this up. I'm gonna place that there. Pull it down. Thank you. Hopefully, you guys are in a good uh, focus and frame. 
I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna have to call my company and find out what's going on. Why am I, why is my streaming <clears throat> going down? Because I have like the maximum on Wi-Fi and internet because I have, you know, it's five of us and we all have laptops. We all have phones. So we pretty much, we use up a lot of bandwidth. But right now, my, one of my kids is not home. So there goes one phone that she took with her computers off. So it shouldn't be interfering on that because it's not being used. This right here. I'm not going to use up those butterflies that I have there. I'm going to leave those for maybe a different kind of project. I think what I'm going to do is do it like so. Yeah. Do it like so. <clears throat> do it like so right here. Down and move this up. I'm going to leave that like that. And actually, I have right in front of me the Green Mermaid uh, markers. So, baby. So, I'm just going to. Of add just a little bit of green to this. What's really cool is that this is kind of translucent, so got all of the other details that are kind of hiding in the background. And I'm not going to do the other one. I just wanted them to, sh to look a little different. So this was uh, worked well enough for that. That worked for that. So that was pretty cool there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start um, planting my trees. And since a lot of this is actually not going to be so dimensional as I originally imagined, I'm going to leave those other bits and pieces that I have um, <clears throat> for the, the other box, which is going to be more steampunkish for those um, to use up on that one. This one's going to be more of just like a mixed media type of canvas. And I'm not going to glue down every single little piece of branch. I'm just going to glue down every, you know, I'm not going to glue down every little twig. I'm just going to glue down every branch. That's what I mean to say. Just going to leave that kind of be so that it's got a little bit of uh, dimension to it. I love how that looks just on its own. So all my little individual things are kind of popping up, if you will. I really do prefer trees without um, leaves for some odd reason. Um, it's just a little quirk of mine. So I'm going to kind of put this one here. It's going to be a lot of layering, this one. I'm not going to push, um, put the glue all the way to the end. Go in there, like halfway up each branch, so that again, this one remains better than the one before. So, kind 
have like some dimension on each one of those. And then we're gonna put put him. Should I do? Yeah, I think I'm gonna um, paint him on. Paint him while he's on there. Let me go ahead and color this thing in. Forgot to do that. I'm just gonna color this, and I'm also gonna add some glitter, glitter paint to watch. so that it stands out. I'm just gonna add his clock like right there. So he's gonna be kind of like up here on top of the hill, like letting everybody know, hurry up, hurry up, the queen is waiting, the queen is waiting. So he's kind of rushing everybody. He's kind of rushing everybody. And then we're gonna put her, but I have to make her teacup first. So let me go ahead and try to trace this baby out a little bit. Um, actually what I might use, actually be able to pull this butterfly thing off. I don't want to um, cover up just that part of it. So I think this is what I'm going to do. Um, to that side, I'm not going to cover up the handle because then that's just going to be a nightmare to fuzzy cut out. So I'm going to mainly cut all around it. And hopefully I'm, I won't make that job too difficult for myself. And I'm going to use this, I'm trying to see which one is doing this. So I'm going to kind of leave the handle itself exposed. And then just this to it. And this is the Dollar Tree glue that I'm using, the embellishment glue that I'm always talking about. That's what I have in that little bottle. I love that glue. And when you use it in a fine tip bottle, it lasts forever. 0.2 ounces or 0.5 ounces or whatever it is, lasts forever when you put it in a fine tip bottle. So that was that was not too bad. All righty then. So we have her there, and I'm gonna glue this on here. And then all I have to worry about now are her legs, face, and her hair. Easy enough. I'll do that with a marker right now. So that's, I think that looks pretty cool right around there. I think that looks pretty cool like that. Let me go ahead and start kind of coloring her in. Here's one of these scraps that I have right here to kind of color her in a little bit.
So let's see. I'm gonna do her hair a little bit. Not that for that. And I'm just gonna color these little things right here. I guess this is part of her ribbon. Color those things. Actually, I have little hearts here that I can use. All right, that was going to have to stay like that. Too, too much. And then as far as her legs are concerned, because I know that I did kind of um, mess her legs up a little bit by going into it with um, the blue. I'm just going to outline her whole body with the black and a little blue line that I put in. It'll give her a little bit of shadow um, in the front and in the back. And then she'll be done. Because I'm not going to paint her. I'm going to just add glitter to all these white faces. I'm going to add glitter, kind of shine. How I'm gonna go about that. I gotta fix this marker. I kind of took a chunk off of it and it's kind of dangling there. So that kind of uh, fixes that for me. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the with the rabbit. I'm gonna just kind of black. Um, let me get her in there. And then I have the last thing I have to kind of figure out um, is the balloon. And I think I'm going to put her there. Where's the chair? I'm going to add it's too many on here. Standing on the bench, and then he's kind of over here. Okay, I think that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of um, add the glue on here. There's a lot of colors happening on this canvas, which can be a little bit of a cluster, you know what, but um, hopefully it'll all work out. And if I have to add, <clears throat> if I have to add like a little bit of gesso here and there to kind of lighten up certain areas, then I'll do that. For the most part, I'm not going to worry too much about that for right now. Put them in.
we're all mad here, right? That's what they say. That's what they say. We're And we have this guy here. He looks so lost, poor thing. This is supposed to be like a bow right there. Hmm. What can we do to fix this bow? Let's give him a little checkered bow. And what I'm gonna do, um, cut little pieces that I can kind of um, cover this up with. I'm gonna give him a little bow right there. The washi tape. Kind of like if I was gonna make a banner, but no banner. And then I'm just gonna do that. And give him a bow because that was driving me nuts. So now he's got a little bit of a bow there. And then we can go ahead and put him in there. And we're almost done with this crazy little piece. And I still have, like I said, to do the little balloon and I have to add that um, little clock thing there. be so that I can kind of glue this little thing on there. It's gonna be on the same thing there. Move the little before he goes down there, let's put a little bit of washing tape close spot right there too. And he's kind of jumping up and down because he's so hyped up on caffeine, he can't take it no more. Shonda, I need your address, darling. I also have to, um, I saw that um, Crafty Cat, I believe her name is, uh, that she also contacted me. So I'm just going to need you guys to um, address so that I can mailing list. Have things to go out. Um, let's see here. Pokey pokey over here. I've never done this kind of thing before with a canvas where um a lot of pieces out of washi tape, if you will. This is like a first for me. Just adding little dabs of glue here and there. Emphasize that we are all mad here. I'm gonna put her right there so that she's kind of like this humongous teacup right in front of this came out of nowhere. <laughs> and then I'm gonna grab some um, washi tape and just add a little bit of washi tape here and there. 
And I think the washi tape that I'm going to use is this one because I think it kind of goes really well with the color scheme that we're using. Just to kind of break up all this um, orange a little bit and add more color at the same time. Okay, so I have to check because it didn't notify it didn't notify me. Check though. If I don't have it, then I'll send you a PM. But I'll check, I'll check for that. Because it doesn't notify me. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Because she left it on my video, but she, I didn't get um I didn't get yours. Like very Christmassy. So we're almost there with this canvas, you guys. just adding little bits and pieces of tape here and there. Um, I'm going to get some more different washi tape tools to um, kind of add just different little elements here and there. <laughs> little tidbits. Little tidbits. But it's got to be good tape that's going to hold because otherwise this tape is going to roll right off. I'm going to get some of this. This is also from eBay. I'm just going to kind of break this into slivers, kind of add them. And I still have to add the clock, but that's going to be coming up next. And I still have to glue down my bunny, my honey bunny. This is just an alternative because this tape right here is like paper. So you can actually do this well with this tape. Because it's kind of like paper already. Add some text as an alternate way of doing it to um, having to, you know, stencil it in or use a stamp or use some paper like collaging. And it kind of a solution to that. things here and there. Put that right across that tree. This right here. <clears throat> and do, do, do. okay. I think I'm pretty good with that for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and glue this baby in and then we're gonna glue this baby in a hole punch. But I don't. If I had a nice circle one, then I could definitely have. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do. Maybe I can glue it over some washi tape. Maybe I can glue it over maybe some of this washi tape. But sometimes that washi tape is not good for gluing. Hello. I think that happens to most people, Shonda, with the, with the DMs. Um, sometimes they're not always the most dependable. But like I said, sometimes I'll get them and they'll be there. I just won't um, know until you know until I actively go and check. And I don't always go check, unfortunately. Cause they don't they don't put them in the same place they you know they separate those they put those like in a different category you don't get those in the same spots as you do like your regular comments
All right, so I got him there. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of um, a little bit. And then I'm going to get some paint. And I'm going to start painting all these guys silver. And then I'm going to um, get my, you know what, let me get my hot glue gun going. Hot glue gun going. Woo. Say that four times fast. So that I can glue my little balloon because I am going to add my balloon to it. I sure do am. That is going to definitely go in here. Um, and then we'll be done. We'll be done with this one um, for the most part. I wish I had, um, let me see, because I still want to add um, Chester Cat. So I'm trying to figure out how and where. I need to get like some. I need to get some, um, what you call it? I think what I'm going to do with Chester, fire. I think what I'm going to do with him is I'm just going to paint him in by hand. I'm going to freehand him um, just so that I can get him in the background because he is a very integral part of the story. Drives her crazy throughout most of it. So her all the wrong information or all the right information, depending on how you look at it, right? So I think he definitely deserves uh, to be in this. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do him justice and get him in there. What am I doing? Let me see if I can do this a different way. Um, let me get some paper. Some pink. Some of this pink, maybe. I can fuzzy cut this baby out. Even if I can fuzzy cut the whole thing, at least I can fuzzy cut most of it. I'm not gonna worry too much about every little individual tooth of the gear. Um, I just wanted to have some kind of backing on this. So pretty much, um, Yes, I'm going to try to hand paint uh, Alice's impression so that, um, oh, you know, he's kind of at play here. Everything that's happening is because he's making it happen since, since he's kind of like this magical cat that can shape and he can be there and like not be there at the same time. So, good, I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to mess this one up. I'll save that for something else. Let me get my black. Well, are you black? Did I put you back? I think I put you back. Why would I put you back when I still need you? I'll get another one. So I'm just going to kind of outline this in black so that it kind of sticks out a little bit from the actual background. Got to add glue on that little spot right there. Add him in. Oh. I gotta add more glue. Right here. I think this will work well right there. And usually I like to do my my canvas is very dimensional, way more dimensional. I, you know, I like to kind of add buttons and this and that and all different kinds of things. But I think for this one, um, only because into the whole mixed media thing with the other one. I am going to add probably some bubbles and stuff to the background. Go ahead and just add to the canvas on its own. Some bubbles and um, just try to add like different things in there. 
But before I do that, let me go ahead and paint um, some of these elements. Um, paint this in um, glitter, in glitter paint, and get some of that going. Where's my glitter paint? Neither here nor there, but I might use some of that glitter. Um, chalky white. I'll get some of that for his face. Fertilizer medium. Where is my chalky paint? Oh, here it is. Meg, where are you? You're always close by because I use you so often. Um, okay, so go ahead and just paint their faces. I'm not gonna change the color of their face. I'm gonna leave their face white, but I'm just gonna add some glitter paint to it. Turn out a little bit. Before I do that with him, let me go ahead and just kind of trace this guy out a little bit. Okay, why well, I keep opening the, the same side over and over and over again. So I'm just going to trace it out just a little bit. Because now when I put this paint over it, it's actually going to uh, move a little bit. Not too much, a little bit. This black marker is kind of dry. It just allows me to add very minimal, you know, kind of uh, ink to it. It won't go too, too crazy. I used to throw the dry markers away as they were drying. I would just throw them away. But sometimes they're good for just that, that little shading in that color too saturated um, and it'll actually work really really well for that all right so that's that and hopefully you are let me bring you out a little bit So this is Glamour Dust Paint, where is it? This is called Glamour Dust Paint and it's an ultra fine glitter paint and I love this paint. You can use any color under it and um, paint over it and amazing glitter job. It leaves everything so sparkly, it's almost like you're looking at, um, at glass. Like you're looking at, you know, snow on the, uh, on the ground, how it glistens and how it shines. Very good for that. And then what I might do later on, probably now while I'm on camera, but probably once I'm off and I start looking at it and looking at it and looking at it, <laughs> is that I'll probably go in and um, add some more details with like a pencil, um, you know, really start going around some of these areas and shading some of these areas out uh, with a pencil, adding just a more dimension in their clothing, um, so on and so forth. They kind of stand out. But right now they just look like spooky little characters. Like, I don't understand why they took that piece out. Like, that doesn't make any sense at all to me. So I'm probably going to paint that white just so that it blends in because I don't really like it. Some things about this dye I like and some things I do not. I don't like the placement of some of the spaces and I definitely don't like how they did the bow. I think they could have just left him regular um, and not him so much. By adding, taking all these little nooks and crannies out, I, I felt like that was kind of pointless. Let's see, let's see, let's see. The clock. I'm actually going to sprinkle a little bit of this um, bold fine dust uh, glitter that I have, also by Deco Art. It's this one right here, and it's really um, it's a gold color, and it's really fine. A little bit. 
over the paint while it's still kind of dry. Talking gibberish now. <laughs> And kind of giving it uh, that really nice fine shimmer. I'm thinking that I'm gonna, well, I'll probably do that after. So let me rinse this again, always remembering to rinse the brush as it'll turn into an unusable tool. I'm gonna put this here. Now I'm gonna try to. Um, but I know where I'm going to put this balloon. And since I went and put the clock over here, chances are I'm going to put the balloon over there. So I'm going to try to cat in now, um, paint this cat up, and see where we go from here. And see where we go from here. Some of this tape that is lifting, I'll probably add glue to it to make sure that it lays down flat. And once everything is done, satisfied with it, I will spray it with a fixative. I have um, this sealer finish, everything in place and make sure that nothing moves in years to come. So let's see here, what am I doing? I'm gonna be painting this guy now. So I'm going to do this, so. Let me get a reference real quick, just to make sure. That's correctly. I, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I never really know. The only reason that I don't glue that balloon in place right now is because I will probably end up losing able to stretch my hand out all the way and that's gonna be a problem for me. Um he's got kind of eyes and this is like a hard charcoal pencil. Maybe I shouldn't use that. I need a soft charcoal pencil. Okay. This won't work. Okay, I guess I'm going to really have to freehand this because I'm not seeing the tool that I need, the pencil that I need to um, get this going. I'm free. Some white paint. I have some white charcoal paint. Everlasting. And I cannot see your, what you guys are writing right now because I am in about where the picture is at. But as soon as I have the just of like, then I'll come back into um, guys. Everlasting white, and I'm going to try to do everything with white so that at least I know where everything is, and then I'll come back in. Um, and I'm going to try to get me a little brush, something that is not too bad. And I'm going to go for this kind of eerily face huge kind of smile that kind of goes all the way across from here to here kind of goes up like so and then so here goes nothing so this is going to be my focal so I'm going to kind of go across it like so you can see what I'm doing.
And the reference picture that I'm looking at is a picture that he it's all black. All you see is the eyes and then the smile, the huge smile. So we're gonna kind of go off of that one. And then his eyes are kind of like very close together in this picture. So there's kind of like one right here. See, I'm really bad with proportions, you guys. So sorry if things um one bigger than the other, but it's one of those things that I'm kind of working out, working at. His eyes are kind of rounded in the in the back, um, so I'm trying to round them out some. I'm just going to fix this one out a little bit more. It's very different when you see a painting and you're painting it flat. Have it on an easel and you're painting it, um, you know, while it's looking at you. Things will look, uh, should be sometimes, depending, and then sometimes they won't. Um, I like sometimes painting better when the picture is upright. And I made a makeshift easel out of a cardboard box. Very, very easy to do. So let me just kind of look at this and perspective and see not bad not bad for doing this from the side all right so i think this is pretty good so now i'm gonna go back now i can sit down i was standing up <laughs> and finish this and see what you guys are saying so let's see So now that I have my, my outline, more or less, I have my picture reference in case I need to go into it. Then I can just kind of fill this in, which is what I need to do now. Just kind of fill, fill these eyes in. And I think his eyes are a little bit yellowish. So I'm gonna get some yellow. Um, the, I think the eyeballs in this, in this reference picture Have you shared your handmade easel on your channel? No, I have not. I have to make it. I have to do a video on it, um, on, on how to make it, but it's super, super easy. Like you're gonna be like, get out of here. It's so, so simple.
not just like a lay, like it's an actual easel that sits on your desktop and you can actually paint and hold and apply pressure to it and it pretty much holds very, very well. Um, right now I have it folded apart because to store it away, you can fold it apart and put it back together whenever you want to. Um, so pretty much I have it in a way that I can, I don't have to have it like all the time in the same way because I don't have the room to have it open all the time. But whenever I'm gonna paint on it, then I just put it together. I, I, I fold it in the, in the position that it needs to be because everything is already pre-scored um, and it kind of falls into the position that it needs to be and I'm good to go. Actually blue in this. Um, so I'm gonna get a little bit of blue. Very simple. Um, and it's made out of um, priority mailbox because I get mail often. So I just, I try to use the things that I already have handy. A lot of art with like cardboard and stuff like that because whenever I have it, because <laughs> it just makes it easy and I don't have to throw it out. Um, his eyes are kind of blue on the reference picture. So I'm going to just do it the way that I see it. Um, but it's really, really simple. Uh, it's really, really simple to put together. And you can make it over and over and over again, as many times, as many sizes as you want. Well, as many sizes as you're able, depending on the box. But once you can do one, you can pretty much do, you know, apply it to all of them. I did, I think I did share it once during a live. If I'm not mistaken, I did paint a video on it. I'm trying to figure out what video. Um, what video? I think it was a mixed media canvas that I did. Um, and then I, I have it all covered up in duct tape so that it's easy to clean. Like, let me see. It's pretty much this right here, two piece. So right now it's in the closed position. And when I open it, piece. So when I open it, I just kind of glue it back into place. So kind of see that it's like, so then this is flat on the desk, <laughs> but I have to make a video on how I made it. It's the simplest thing. But like when I'm doing landscapes or um, painting those kinds of things, I like to use it because um, it just helps me see things a little bit better. And I wear glasses, <laughs> so um, I'm seeing things flat. I can see it better from one angle than the other. So it kind of um, throws my whole proportions off. All right, so that's it for that. Um, thank you. Listen, when you don't want to spend 50, you know, 40, 50 dollars on something, you try to figure out a way <laughs> to save that money and use it for dyes and stamps <laughs> as opposed to for easels. You know, I can use that money to buy brushes. I love brushes. Um, you know, I, I always try to whenever I'm I'm able to, like whenever I can, uh, see something that my MacGyver kind of kicks in and says, "You can make that." Um, I always try to do it once. Like I made my own my own stamping tool when the Misty came out because I couldn't afford the Misty. It was like eighty dollars. Um, so I was like, "Oh no." I use 
um, binder clips, plexiglass, and a, and a frame. Done deal. Done deal. So now I need um, green, I think is the color in the eyes. Black. Black. So now I need black. dark blue. Let me get my media box. Um, and get me a black. I just need a little bit of this black. This media line and it's very loose. Hopefully that'll help me to big area without having to go too crazy. Now let me just go ahead and move this and just point this up for myself just a smidge um, so that I can kind of right so i always try to um you know whenever possible like with the brayer i made my own using a rolling pin now i granted it's not the same it makes me feel like i'm doing the same thing i think that i think that's good enough <laughs> I feel like his eye is a little bit smaller. Let me rinse this out. I feel like he needs his eyes wider on this side. So let me just grab a little bit of this blue paint real quick. And make it a little bit wider. Nothing too crazy, but I end up giving my stuff away, which is why people don't understand that I, I get a little obsessive, compulsive when it comes to some of the things that I make because eventually it's going to somebody's house because I don't, I, there's no way that I can keep all my, my work here. Stuff. So I give it away. So I try to get it nice now. So later, as I'm trying to package it away to give to somebody, I don't find defaults. I gotta do this and I gotta do that. So I tried to um catch it all in one shot. It's bad enough that as, as humans we are already not perfect when it comes to how we make things to freehand. It's really hard to make two of the same anything. So, pretty good. Right there. Such a hard thing to draw two little black, black little slivers there, right? I think. I'm seeing. Okay. So he's got like this little black, um, very thin little black outline all around his, um, the inside of his mouth. So I'm going to try to capture that. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to succeed, but I'm going to try. Bring that out a little bit. trying not to apply pressure to this thing at all.
almost, <laughs> almost caught it at the end, right? Where before I painted that that second eye, it was just a little bit smaller. I almost uh, painted it in, and I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. And now to try to paint these triangle teeth, which is another oh. And I just grabbed one of the first pictures that came up when I looked up uh, his name. I did not really go for anything too uh, fancy or out of this out of this world. I did a live stream. Was it a live stream before? Yeah, I think I did a live stream where I did him, the whole cat, a while back. Remember? And I also did a, a shadow box of Alice in Wonderland sometime a couple months ago back. I think it was like November or December last year. So this is a reoccurring theme <laughs> with, with this cat and this Alice girl. That's pretty good for that. Let me go ahead and try to get her teeth in there. Um, get his teeth in there, not her teeth. Get his teeth in there which I know is where I'm going to struggle somewhat. Really, really sharp. He's almost like a Halloween character. Teeth. It's hard. But at least he'll have teeth. I was going to put this in my daughter's room for now, but she ain't going to want that. <laughs> She's not going to want this face smiling at her in the middle of the night with these glowing white teeth. It will be flung towards my door faster than I can say, what happened? <laughs> I can just see her now. She will. Yeah. Oh, he's got like a million teeth to this guy. Like, come on now. The person that thought of this cat must have had a lot of time on their head, on their hands, uh, to be here thinking about different teeth. He look like he's ready for some steak. All 
Alrighty, so I think he's close enough. Thank you. <laughs> he's close enough. I should paint the inside of his mouth black. It's kind of black in the picture. So I think I'm going to paint the inside. I'm going to try to paint the inside black. Um, and I think that, that will help separate the teeth a little bit. And then I think I'll be about done with this. I got my heat gun already going. So once I do this, I'm going to add the balloon here and have the basket there. And um, I'm probably going to paint the balloon black just to have it stand out a little bit. And I think this is going to help um, with the teeth situation. Painting the whole mouth inside black. I think that'll help the goal um, make it look a little bit more. Sharp. Thanks, Isabel. I said it hop. Are you still thinking about it? Yeah, I think adding that black in there definitely helped out. Um, and I'm going to see where else on here I can add black. I can kind of bring everything together. And this definitely screams fall to me, screams Halloween. Um, it's like every, everybody's getting ready. Hmm, I see. No worries for this one because I'm going to be making another one somewhere down the line. So as I figure out what kind of a theme. So I think that the next one, if anything, you can join into that one. So I think... This is it. I think I got his smile. For the most part, I feel like a Pokemon. Just trying to fix all my little, all my little issues here. So we're gonna just let this go. Still need to do something else. Like work on this balloon. All right. 
Thank you. My teeth are jacked up, but <laughs> I'm sure they'll get the idea of what it's supposed to be. I think I'm just going to outline the eyes a little bit. And um, that will just give it more of a completed look. Other than that, I think I'm going to go for this balloon idea. There. And I'm not going to do the top. I'm just going to do the bottom. Because it's like he's manifesting. He's starting to come out like he does in the in the cartoon. Goes from being a little bit visible to being fully visible and pieces of him show at a time, but not everything all together. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to get this balloon. That I want to do this here, which is like um those head pieces, head, um, those little head bandana things. And I think this is what I'm going to do. Use this like the little basket and I'm just going to glue one on top of the other on top of the other to kind of do that. Um, and then I'm going to use probably some baker's twine to do that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then this guy, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and wash him out. Um, I'm going to add washi to him. I was going to paint it, but I'm, I think I can get away with uh, washi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use double sided tape. Here it is. I'm going to double sided tape the whole thing. So I'm going to do that and then um, this is going to stick. It's not going to be the biggest. Although I think it'll peel off either way. Silicone does not stick to nothing. All right, so that's a waste of time. I'm not going to waste all my tape. All right, so let's see. We need another idea. Um, what else can I do? No, I could, but it's just going to crack. Um, what can I do? What can I do? Any other tape will work? Let's see another tape. Hello. Come on. Let's see. Okay, hold up. Put this down. This tape sticks so well, it doesn't even want to lift off the roll. All right, here we go. All right, I got it now. So let's see, what about you? I hope I'm able to um, glue with the hot glue because I get a feeling that this thing is silicone just like the glue so I don't know how that works. And uh, see if it'll help it catch a little bit better. Hmm. Yes. When all things fail, but not all washi tape will do the job. So I'm tr I'm hoping um, I can get this one to do the job because it's a it's a good brand. Um, tape. 
brand and it's, I can just tell that it's a good brand because of how it feels and just the elasticity if that's actually how you say it of the washi tape itself um putting that all in there and then it's a little wrinkly but I think from where we're coming to where we're going is not too bad um so let's see here well to itself so hopefully that's some kind of indication that we're on to the right track here I could have painted it and it might have worked, but um, 1500 coats I would have to do um, in order to get this to kind of work the way I wanted to. So I'm trying to see how I can get away or around that. So it's even possible for the washi tips and just seeing what I have. Smaller tape. Now I'm just having fun. <laughs> Got to add the hot glue. It won't stick to the silicone. Oh, so it won't even stick to the silicone. Look at that. My mind was going in the right direction without even knowing it. This is a lot of washi tape, but I think it should be fine. I hope it'll be fine. Come on, baby, we're almost there. A lot of washi tape to one silicone thing. <laughs> boy, oh boy.
I think what I'm gonna do after this is all done, I'm gonna just um put glue all over this. Like um, I'm gonna seal it with glue, but I'll probably do that after I finish the live stream. Thing with glue, um, just to make sure that this glue does um this washi tape doesn't fall off. Cause I put so much washi tape in that. I don't think I've used this much washi tape in all my years of crafting. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've used this much in like forever. Um, but I think it's gonna look really cute when it's all done. I think I've covered every little nook and cranny. So this is my helium balloon. It's gonna go right here. That's gonna go right there. Now let me just get some um, twine. I gotta get some kind of spring um, to do this. Right on time. I found some of this black one. I'm gonna use the black one because I have so much orange going on in here already. So, let's do that. I don't think I need that much. Let's see if this is going to work. No, no watered down glue, not to seal it. Uh, watered down glue, ow, I burned myself. <laughs> um, watered down glue is good for collaging. Um, to seal it, I'm actually going to use Mod Podge. Um, I'll show you right now. I'll use... Um, for this type of thing where I'm like adding all these different elements, I'll use this deco which is a glue and sealer and a finisher so this is gloss so what happens is after it's all done it'll be nice and glossy but you can also get matte which will leave it nice and flat for you um, and it'll do the same job this is really thick this glue but any of those glues like that will work so if you're going to use, let's say, school glue, because that's what you have, then don't water it down. Just brush it on as it is. But school glue will dry a little bit cloudy. So you want to make sure that it's a glue that dries clear. Um, thing is said and done, you won't get no cloudiness. It won't take away from the brilliance of the colors or anything of that nature. All right, so this is what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to hook it through so that I kind of have that there. And then I'm going to add this to the little basket areas. And I'm going to try to glue this down now. Wish me luck, ladies. Wish me luck. Let's do 
this is the last of it right here. And this really did become an adventure. <laughs> it really did. I could have done more, like if I wanted to do more strings like that, you know, you could do that if you want to. I'm, because I want to go ahead and add this basket. All right, so it did seem to hold on. Oh, so we have our little glue here, a little basket here kind of hanging from the inside of, um, you know, where they are. So that's gonna be, I guess, my little dimensional will. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna make a little, a little box um, that I can use with that. So I'm gonna see what I can do. Okay, I have this piece right here. This is some of the leftover piece from when I made my shadow box, um, the shabby chic shadow box that I made for Tanya. So I'm going to use, I think, some of this and just kind of glue them together and make a little makeshift box. So I'm going to fold this kind of like in half, I guess. I'm going to fold that in half. I'm gonna split this in the center. Level that out right there. And I'm gonna enclose them onto themselves like so. And then I think, maybe that's a little big. I think it's a little big, let me see. That's a little big, so I don't want it to be that big. This has a lot of stuff on it, so this is why it's kind of cracking. So I don't even know if I want to use this. Um, what else do I have? I gotta have something else. Okay, let's try this little black one. Yeah, it stuck. Yes, it did. So thank you so much. Because it did stick. Sometimes you just, you know, you just gotta wing it. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta wing it and it works. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can make a little makeshift kind of box out of this um this is just cardboard I'm trying to see i'm gonna do this um because i got it on there now i just need to make the basket and i got these strings so i kind of want to leave them hanging i want these strings to kind of hang um Kind of be uh, there. I'm gonna put the, the the box like somewhere around here, but I want these to have that movement on it. I think that's pretty cool. So now it's just a matter of finding a little, making a little box. Not so much finding one, but making a little box that I can kind of use. Where's that braid? Because I want to wrap it with this braided material and kind of wrap it around. I could use a tube too. I don't have to use a box. Carmen, use a tube. A tube might be better. Oh, Carmen, let's make a tube. Let's see. Let's make a tube. Let's make a tube. Let's make a tube. Let's see. Not all baskets are square. So let's make a tool. Add some hot glue and get it in there. I
got it. You don't have to make a humongous tube. I'm not going to use all this. And then I'm going to add the braiding. What do you mean I always get away with my ideas, Isabel? What do you mean? <laughs> I just, I have, I, I pray, <laughs> that's the only thing I do. I'm like, please, God, please, 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 let this work. I'm just gonna cut this out. And it's gonna be open in the bottom, but I don't, I mean, I'm not really worried about that. Honestly, who's gonna really jump in this little basket? Nobody. So it's not that much of a big deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and start um, adding this little stuff. Yeah. Uh, I need you to be braided. Okay, let's just stick you on. So I'm gonna add all this little braiding that looks like it's a weave basket. Honestly, Isabel, that's all I do. I'm like I everything that every time that I touch the, the paper, the canvas, whatever it is, I'm like praying the whole time. I'm like, please, please, please. <laughs> Please, wife, please, please, please. And trust me, there's a lot of projects that you guys don't see that are complete and utter failures. I made this one canvas one time when I was kind of practicing um, like faces and stuff like that, like how to paint them. I'm not that good at it still. I'm, it's like a work in progress for me. Um, but I was trying to get like more realistic with it cartoony because I my faces still look a little flat when I make them dimensional um when it comes to painting now when I when I draw when I tr you know like when I pencil draw they come out a lot better I like the shading this and that paint is a little bit more difficult for me I made my brother I was like so fixated on making my brother oh my god so I made him this canvas, and the girl looked like Bruce Jenner. Like, <laughs> my husband starts cracking up because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And it was so funny because it was right around that time when, you know, that whole transition news came out and all this other stuff. So my brother's like, what the heck is this? You know, like, he didn't say it, but, like, I saw the look on his face. Like, okay, homegirl look a little funny. So weird. But, um. Uh, there's a lot of things, like I said, you guys don't know. And he took it home with him because that's just how my brother is. He, he took it home with him, even though I know that thing's probably sitting in the closet somewhere because I wouldn't hang it on my wall. It, it's sad to say, it, but I probably wouldn't hang it on my wall. Like, what the heck? I all messed up. Like, I, I messed that whole thing up. Like, it's so sad. I messed that whole thing up. My husband keeps laughing because he knows it's true. Like that, that poor, that poor thing. It had one eye, and I did it wrong. Like, how can you do one eye and you do it wrong? Like, I feel like asking him, and then he's telling me, like, you know, on the way there, like it started falling apart. I'm like, yeah, you probably threw that thing out the window. Like, I don't blame you. About it now, it's like then I was like, nah, I don't look that bad. Thinking about it now, I'm like, oh my god, what did I do? Like, how dare I give that give that to somebody? And it was a huge canvas, you guys. Not a small canvas. This thing was like humongous. Humongous. Because what happened is, is that I found somebody, I guess, had thrown it away. Like, they had an elephant or something on it. And then ping. I guess somebody used it for like a practice canvas themselves. And I found it. Like I was walking home and it was like right there. And I was like, what? I found the canvas. So here I am getting froggy with myself, right? Thinking that I'm over here done thing. And that poor thing. I felt so bad for it. Okay, this braid only went but so far. <laughs> it finished already. It finished already. Let me get some fabric. So, you know, and this is why I always tell people, listen, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I know how to do this. Trust me, I don't know how to do nothing. 
anything. I just get lucky every now and then. I just get lucky and every now and then things work out, but I am like the last person to be like, oh, do it this way, oh, do it that way. I don't know nothing about nothing about nothing. Even when I say something, Google it just to be safe because you never know. I do this mostly for fun. For you guys to also have fun, but not because you know, I have a right way of doing things or a wrong way. But I, for a fact, have busted my head with already, and I know, okay, like, she's doing it wrong. Then I probably said, like, listen, you know, try it this way, but, like, oh, you know, I'm an expert at this or at that. Girl, I have so much growing to do. I still have so much, you know, so much more to go, like, any of that. And this is like why I want to add more card making um, to it, like to, to what I do to my um, streams and stuff. All that I'm not that good at making cards, but I, I'm really wanting to get better. The way that I'm going to get better is if I really put it, you know, give it my all, like really go into it full throttle and try um, and focus on that on that task for a while. Because mixed media stuff, I know how to throw stuff together already. <laughs> this is just what that is. This is grab this, grab that, grab this, grab that. It might not all go together, just throw it all together, add a little color, you could go. Like, that's how I see it. The, the other thing that I want to get better at is, you know, painting realistically. I want to know, I want to learn how to paint realistically. That's a tougher goal right there um, to kind of go for but I do want to learn. I do want to learn how to do that. My sketching is not too bad. I could get better at that also, but I'm, I can sketch better when I'm not in pressure, like when I'm away from pressure or when I'm under pressure. When I'm relaxed, my things come out better. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I just get lucky, Shonda. Honestly, it's just luck. I wish I can stay here and be like, oh, it's not, it's not. No, it's luck. <laughs> A lot of luck. Um, dun -dun -dun. let me see. Let me add a little bit of tape to the bottom of this. My Bob, no, no more tape. No more tape. Um, I need to get a circle then. I need to punch out a circle or get a circle. Circle going so that I can glue the little bottom parts together. But I hope, I hope with time, because I'm good at, like, if I can see it, then I can, I can do it. Like, I'm good at that. My mind, for some reason, works very well with following instruction when I can see it. Not so well with um, with audio instruction. A couple times, maybe, before I can get it. But you can show me something, um, maybe once, twice, maybe, and I'll get it. Which is why a lot of the times I swear that I can do things um that maybe i cannot do but i think i can because my mind saw it and it's like hey you got this <laughs> but a lot of times you know i'm just <laughs> actually what i want to do i was telling my husband i was like um when i do one of my morning um morning sessions i want to have him like i can like see how hard it is to make a car like if it's just hard for me I told them, I was like, I want you to do like a copycat. Like I want us to sit and, you know, during my live stream and you make a card, the same card that I'm making and we're both pretty much doing the same thing. So he's, he's game and he said he wants to try it. Definitely going to be doing that. I'm trying to hog loose. 
I'm trying to close this thing off a little bit, even though I know I said that it doesn't matter, but a little bit because I just don't want to have this open like that because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It looks ugly. So I'm trying to um, get something that will cover this up. 920. I extended my time today. So let's see. I just got maybe three of these so that I can just stick them all one under the other. Get this um, basket closed up. And then Then I can add my strings to it. So I'm just gonna close off this basket real quick and then add my strings to it, you guys. And I think for me today, I need to learn how to make quick projects. I think the success of many YouTubers is the fact that they can do things quick, be in and be out. And unlike me, yes. Hi, Tanya. Hey, darling. Hey, Liz. So um, I think that I have to somehow find um, that happy medium. Timing, the crafting, and the execution. That's where I, I kind of messed up at is that I take so long for everything that I do. People don't have the patience to be sitting for three hours. I don't have the patience to watch others for that long. So I know it's hard to sit for an extended amount of time and just kind of watch somebody craft. I better just put that like that for right now and then add something a little bit better later on. But I do want to get this basket on there so that I can show you guys what I did. So um my first my first um broadcast or my first you know live that i do during the morning or my second one i'll have to figure it out with him which one um, i'm gonna get him to craft with me and everything that every everything that i do on the card he's gotta do so embossing powder stamping like the whole nine yards i want him to do the he's laughing already <laughs> he knows that um, no. Well, I mean, I'm I'm gonna not make it that difficult, but it's like make it simple. Make things simple. That's the problem. Think about it in my head. It seems simple, but executing my head be lying to me. I'm trying to find my blue here. Sometimes it tells me things that I want to hear, but it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it come out as easy um, in reality as it does in my mind. And it is bad when you're lying to yourself, you know? Aw. Thank you, my lovelies. I can always count on you guys. We're gonna just add this string right here on the side of the basket. The balloon came out. I think that overall the balloon's a little small for how big I made this basket, but it's okay. And this is what I tell you guys with me and proportions. <laughs> I'm not that great at proportions. Um, imagination, I'm good at. So it's got a little basket. Yeah, it's got a little basket. Okay, it's a little sticky. It's a little sticky still. It came out really cute overall. I would have to glue this down, which I will. Kind of popping up poly sides that I gotta finish, but and I I'm probably gonna add more stuff to this, you know, on my off time as I see it. 
I really love this. This little basket made it for me. Well, I'm gonna see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Um, the first thing he just told me, he's like, "Don't make it overcomplicated. Easy steps." <laughs> and he's laughing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I try not to overcomplicate it too much, but <laughs> the day he's cracking up. But at the end of the day, it's complicated for me, so I don't know how to simplify it for him. But it should be a fun time. It should be a fun time. Um, and a good way to kind of kick off uh, the crafts. And maybe I can, if he likes it, then maybe I can get him every now and then to kind of like participate. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> yes 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 so i'm gonna shut my glue gun down and i think i add more to him if i do if once it's completely completely finished and i feel like i can't add anything to it if i've done more to it then i'll make a video sharing what like what i've done i really like this balloon i don't know how secure the balloon itself is but it did adhere itself for now but i won't go yanking at it basket is cute I love the little basket, not too difficult. Um, and all the little die cut pieces, I think it's a little simple for me for the kind of stuff that I tend to do. To me, it feels like it needs more, needs more because I'm always overdoing it. That's just my MO. Overall, it's been pretty good. And I want to thank you guys so much for once again, spending these past couple hours from, with me and giving me your ideas and insights and also cheering me on along the way. Um, it's been fun as always. Yeah, he'll get it. It's not that difficult. I just, you know, like, I'm going to make him crazy. <laughs> no. Hi, Claudia. You made it, but I'm done. So with that being said, you guys, um, if there's a follow-up, then I'll probably call this um, Washi Land uh, follow-up so that you guys know more or less what it is in case you want to see what, I've, what else I've done to it. But other than that, I want to thank you all so, so much for spending these past couple hours with me. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be coming on live this Wednesday or not, or if I'm going to be doing this effect of the following um, from me coming live Wednesday and Saturday to me coming live Wednesday. It's going to be Tuesday and Thursday in the morning around 10. Um, and then it'll be Saturday in the evening. So I'll still keep my mixed media Saturdays, if you will. And then I'll do two days of paper crafting so that I can really practice and get better um, at the skills. So um, I'll let you guys know, though. And yes, he'll be all right. He'll have fun. But thank you all so, so much for the inspiration support i love you guys and i will see you guys next week one of these days <laughs> um so have a good one bye